Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel that is Del Chanel's 40th World where it is definitely a family affair and I am just going to say we're going to be going quickly over the Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired tonight. It was titled Ken versus Kenya or Kenya versus Ken whatever season 12 episode 15 okay i broke it up into six small parts we're gonna go in it like this because it was a snooze fest i tell you only time i got some kicks out of the whole deal was when mark came in the scenes and he was shedding kenya or how he called her ken down the other stuff was nothing but just oh no smoking mirrors or fluffy fluff stuff you know it could have just been shown in 30 minutes and that's where we could have kept it okay <laughs> because it was nothing to it it was easy peasy peasy cake pie okay if you understood that because hell i didn't understand it either but i just felt like you know i donated my hour worth of time looking at the show and i only got 15 minutes worth okay that's how we going with it we're gonna get right on into it okay uh, first, we had Eva coming back from last um, episode, and I'm thinking she dilated one centimeter. I thought, hell, she was going to stay on in the hospital, okay? But now they sent her on home, honey. And she was sitting up there trying to regulate Mike and uh, Marley and whatever he was doing with them. And she just felt so out of place, laying on her sofa, looking beautiful, but acting a hot mess. We went on from that because uh, she didn't have no baby and she's still trying to go out through this whole episode scenes where she still want to walk around and do stuff and i'm like eva if you don't sit your little pregnant way behind time to have this baby down somewhere because you're getting on my nerves have the baby or not and then i don't understand why they didn't call well really they didn't necessarily have to call the paramedics to escort her or carry her to the um hospital because she wasn't going nowhere anyway she wasn't dilated but one centimeter but it is what it is we moving on we're gonna go to cynthia cynthia is reading mike's book on the computer i guess she e-booked it or whatever and she's becoming a little paranoid okay excuse me like she needed to be doing something other than reading this book and i'm like now nah, you should be reading his behind because you got no business really thinking about marrying somebody who is totally not marriage material cynthia but i'm not gonna go into it with you because you're gonna do what you want to do but while she's reading the ebook on the computer mike's walks in now i'm like hold up hold up that's what we should have all to something or the producers should have said something to Cynthia and her confessionals. How the hell Mike have a key to your house? But when you went up there just recently to visit him in California or LA, whatever it was, wherever it was, Los Angeles County, I think they're the same thing. Okay, yes, they are. Um, but yeah, you go up there and you have to bang on the door to get in. But you gave him access fully, totally locked down and lock stock and barrel he got a key to your place come and go as freely as he can but you can't even go up there and enter his house and be like hey where everybody at or, you know a situation like that and then your daughter's supposed to be living there partaking of his digs girl give me a break yes you need to come back on television and on your show and say no nah, me and mike ain't getting married we just took it too fast we just gonna date okay because i ain't ready i ain't ready i ain't ready that's what you should have said cynthia but you did so we're gonna just move on um then we got um her and mike start talking about you know the book and um he says he gives her everything he you know she his everything and she's questioning it now he's having some like a little of an attitude about her questioning him and he said he poured all his heart and soul in the book. He know where he is. But if she's hacking, uh, having second thoughts, you know. And she's like not really understanding that. And she said, no, we just need to learn how to communicate with each other. And, you know, they was, she was sitting talking. And he was talking. And she, he was saying something. And she was saying something. And she said, well, wait a minute. I don't cheat. And he said, yeah, you don't cheat. Now you don't think about cheating. But that's not saying you won't cheat. She, and she got matter of fact on his behind. And said, no, I don't cheat. Won't cheat. Cheating ain't in, even in my vocabulary or DNA. Okay, that's what she was trying to tell uh, Mike. But Mike really wasn't hearing it. But Cynthia has got a backbone this particular episode. And I'm going to say this episode because, you know, that backbone coming to her and then it goes right out. 
You remember the last time? Oh, excuse me. When she was at that uh, wine bell- bailey cellar and her and Nene got into it. And we thought, uh-oh, Cynthia finna get in Nene ass and she ain't gonna come out until she done, okay? Uh, how they say when you got something that you done made a pretty good uh, dish out sometimes? How they say you put your foot in it? Yes, honey. We were gonna see Cynthia put her foot all up in Nene ass. But she didn't do it. She didn't do it. She talked a good game, led us to a good game. And then she went outside to go find her bestie. I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, pull it back. So, we come to this scene on this episode for this week. You know, she goes right into Mike. And she holding tight. She holding steady. And, you know, she's checking Mike about all of his flaws. And he's saying, oh, you getting on me. Oh, you perfect. And she's like, uh-uh, don't do that. Don't I ain't say I was perfect this, that, third. Well, damn, Cynthia, what are, what are you, honey? You should have said, damn right, I'm perfect in the area of not fooling around and being a cheater. You right, I'm perfect in that. That's how she should have played it out. But, you know, it just is what it is. Then she tried to do this scenario about how Mike gets down and he, you know, Says what he got to say, and then when he don't want to hear no more, he walk out. And I'm like, Cynthia, red flags all hitting you upside your head, honey. If you already know this is what that man do, that man ain't learned nothing. He wrote a book just like Steve Harbour wrote a book, but it ain't worth a shit. It ain't worth it's the paper that it's printed on, okay? They just trying to sell books, trying to make money, and they're not living or walking a walk or talking a talk, okay? Oh, Lord, Cynthia, you got all what you need to make that decision that he ain't the one girl. The Lord didn't send you him. The Lord didn't send you him. God, the Lord ain't going to send another chaotic situation for you to be in. The Lord is about peace, honey, and ain't nothing peaceful about my kill. He's just riding you, riding you raw. And then when he gets finished, he done scraped enough blood out your being. He going to move on to the next prey. Okay, he took your platform, stepped in it, solidified himself in it, and he's forging head. Whether you on his train or not, you let him in the door, and he ain't coming out till he gets what he's got. And that's his own show. Okay, thank you, Cynthia, for not seeing that coming. Okay. And then as her little playtime, she's telling us how Mike gets down with their communication. When she leaves, he goes and tells the cameraman because he didn't want to hear the bullshit. Now I'm like, damn, Cynthia, you see what I'm saying? It's on black and white. It's on color. It's on film. It's audio. The man ain't checking for you, baby. He ain't checking for you. But can we tell you anything, Cynthia? No, we can't. You're going to have to learn the hard way. And then Mike goes to tell her, well, if I'm not making you happy and I want you to be happy, maybe I'm not the man for you and because I want to see you happy and just that. And the third and Cynthia gets mad and storms off and go into the living room looking like she's just all frustrated and torn to pieces. I'm like, well, the man here was telling you, right, he ain't the one for you if he ain't making you happy. If he can't make you happy now. Who's to say he's going to make you happy later on? And I would have counteracted him. I said, honey, you ain't making me happy right now. So you need to pack your things and go on back to L.A. That's what I would have said. Give me some time. Give me some time to think. Of. Maybe we are rushing into this. Well, I think we are rushing into this. Because if you got me feeling this kind of way, I don't know where and when and how you going to make me feel in October, child. Oh, yes. Go pack your things and let me miss you for a minute. That's what I would have said. I would have counteracted and see what he did on camera, okay? Because that's all he wants is... Uh, uh, camera time so we move on to the next scene we got candy eating she's at home she texting kenya they trying to set up some kickball uh little exercise thing and it was cute and all and it just kept showing the picture of candy eat 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 and i'm like okay okay candy okay you're getting back you're eating now you're not drinking your life away that's a good sign and you know i'm like okay and then she says she's um text nene and nene saying she ain't coming or if she comes she's gonna get seven minutes of her uh, time. Meaning she was picking at Kenya. Because Kenya came to her vent half heartedly. And she only spent seven minutes. So it just is what it is. Then we got Shay and Kenya talking. Uh, with Candy VI video call. And Candy's talking about Nene. And uh, about wh- what they had said. And of course Kenya's like. I don't want her to come anyway. You invited her this that. I thought we playing kickball. It just went to a whole nother deal. With Ken. Ken I mean. Yeah Candy. Taking back messages, which she didn't have to, but she did. And getting Kenya all up in her feelings about Nene, who really don't care one hill of a beans, okay? 
And um, then we got Nene trying to uh, light candles and Greg coming in trying to see what she's doing. And she goes and tells Greg briefly about her little ladies event and this, that, and the third. And Greg looking like he's uh, interested, but it, it don't take long for Greg to get disconnected. And um, Greg goes on telling Nene he's been in talking and texting situation uh, with Ma. They've been having cordial conversations. And, you know, Nene really got a problem with it because she said um, Greg and uh, Mark had hit it off real well and they enjoy talking to each other. Then you got Nene talks about couples night and how they gonna have a couple's night when that's something her and Greg started. I'm like Nene, just how you just started a couple's night you ain't been wanting to be with these women, you ain't been wanting to film with them and if they like the ideal of something you started, kudos okay, but it ain't no he I, they, we started. Okay, it's just, hey, they went out, they invited you. You didn't want to come, but of course, Kenya didn't want you to come either. So, nothing missed on that part. But he did tell, um, Nene that he wasn't going to attend any event without her being present. So, I'm like, okay, Greg, you stand up, guy, whatever. So, we go into the next scene where Candy, uh, uh, picks Cynthia. They're picking teams at this little sports arena where they done rent it out or whatnot. And Candy picks Cynthia on her team for the kickball little game they finna get ready to play. And she she makes a little sly pun like, you know, they take it back. They show a clip where Portia and, um, what's her name? Portia and Cynthia got into it. And, Por I mean, Kenya had, not Kenya, but Cynthia had kicked Portia in the stomach or in the vaginal area just to get her off her, her because, you know, Portia was finna fight, in a sense, uh, Cynthia for saying something stupid or whatever. So, I'm like, okay, okay, so you finna bring that whole incident up, Port? I mean, Candy, okay, so you already starting shit. But anyway, they played the tournament and everything, They were, or, or the teams that they were playing, where they divided everybody up on Team Twirl, and the other one was called the Hurricanes, which was Candy um, team. They lost miserably. And I'm like, Candy, I always talk about she competitive, she sports-oriented, and she likes to compete. But, I mean, I'm like, Kenya? Kenya was being your little short behind uh, Candy? I'm like, girl, you're like, Candy would run out of energy. And I'm like, damn, you just was drinking your way off that way. You weren't exercising. You weren't doing nothing. So that, because it showed me on how lack of stamina you had to even play kickball. And you couldn't blame it on baby Ace because he'd been in the world <laughs> for, what, three years, four years now? So you couldn't blame it on baby Blaze because baby Blaze was not being carried by you. So I don't know, Candy. I don't know, but I'm not going to hold you too much on that because I'm fat myself. What can I say? Okay, so I ain't going to get on you, but I'm just saying for you to be competitive and you always want to have that winning spirit, girl, you got to be in shape to compete, honey. And you got Kenya, and y'all in the same range of being aged. And I'm like, okay, moving on from there. Then we got Kenya, and Kenya says the girl's going to take a trip to Athens, Greece. Okay, at first I thought she said, damn, y'all just going to go uh, a two-hour trip to Athens, Georgia? What kind of trip is that? But, of course, it was Athens, Greece. Then Kenya, um, she... Candy was saying, you know, everybody's invited. And Portia was like, is everybody invited? Because we got a few people not here, Tanya and, and, and Nene. And they said, oh, yeah, they invited too. They could come. And Kenya was like, well, since it's going to be dual, me and Candy's trip for them, then, yeah, because it was just me, Nene would not be on board. Tanya would not be there either. I'm like, oh, girl, who you going to? Oh, girl. Kenya, the whole crew is turning against you. Can't you see not see the writing on the wall? And your husband ain't even trying to get into your uh on your lane to be uh, a force to be reckoned with. He's saying y'all a team, but you acting foul, and he ain't gonna sit up there from you because he was shutting you down every time he got a chance. We go to scene four. Um, we have Cynthia and Mike video chatting each other. Cynthia trying to make up with uh Mike um over the tell a chat they're having or whatnot and he's still throwing shade at Cynthia and Cynthia still look like she's getting her feelings hurt I'm like girl and he talking about where he's gonna you know they can go to council he's gonna set it up and I'm like girl Cynthia you know too many people hopefully you won't go to Dr. Sherry the same counseling person that Dennis and uh, Portia going to because she ain't doing no good she ain't doing no good but how can you live in Atlanta Georgia and you not know some type of therapist hell use your Google app 
put somebody in. Put in counselors for married couples. I'm sure you'll get a slew of them. But you want to go by who Mike knows. Mike is the one got you in this awful situation. Why do you want to lean on his understanding on finding a coach, a marriage coach? Okay? And it, you ain't even, oh, girl, it's just too much. You're taking me through too much. Moving on. Okay? We got time with Mark and, and Kenya and the baby Brooklyn. They're out calling themselves having a swimming date. And that was just nice to see him uh being with his daughter and of course he didn't like certain techniques that the swimming coach was giving him about dumping his baby on the water and stuff he told me i want to dump kenya on the water and not bring her back up i said god damn okay kenya do you hit a man do you hit a man but again you all know i think it's a fake fraudulent foolery type of fuckery marriage she got going on that nobody can find any kind of results of a marriage license so it just is what it is but mark is not playing into her foolishness okay and then mark um they talk about his event that's coming up and he wants to have like a, a couple's night out just to solidify everything that's coming up with his main event and you know it's just going real smooth and, and kosher until he asked about the list and who she invited and she called herself not inviting nene and this that and third he said girl you're gonna have to just rest on some of this stuff it's foolishness then he gonna start talking to his baby girl like kenya wasn't even there i'm like okay i get that then she talks about um you know we she did tell her she didn't invite him to the bowling bit and she really don't want her there at that black man's layout thing he said petty 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 get it get, get yourself a bone okay Patty, patty, quite quick. Oh, hell, I don't even want to go with that because I lost my nurse for a round and I was trying to hook up. But anyway, he's pretty much, no, we need everybody on deck. This is a word of the cause. You will invite her. That's where it needs to be. And she, on the other hand, said, nah, Nene don't like me. I don't like her. I don't want to have her in that private setting and, uh, you know, uh, where you know it's just too much. I don't. It's an intimate setting, and I don't see intimate with Nene. Okay, I don't want to. I want to be bothered with her. That was she was trying to tell Ma. Ma, like, suck it up. You will be bothered. She will be coming, and that's the end of that story. Okay, but Kenya still uh, speaking out of term, and he ain't liking it. And he, she's basically saying in her confessionals, "You need to be on my side. Whoever I don't like, you don't like. That's just what it is." But yeah, Ma go by the beat of his own drum and beat. He ain't got time to, to feel what Kenya's talking about. So we go to um the fifth scene. We got date night. Kenya's trying to say, "Oh, this is a date night. Oh, uh, maybe we can have some time together. We can sneak in the house." Da da da. And he looking at her, and and the whole scene was just looking like it was just too hard for him to handle he didn't want to be with her uh just what he was saying going back and forth it was just it was just hard to look at because i'm like there's no love there there's no relationship there what the hell is kenya talking about i, I almost felt sorry for her but then i thought nah i can't feel sorry for kenya because she brought the shit on herself then you got portia she comes in with dennis ready to bowl Dennis just looks totally out of place, like he don't want to be there. Like, why, 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 why? Where are the strippers? Just that and third. Okay, but then it kind of looked like Portia was pregnant. Got a little push there. But when she ordered that Hennessy, she ordered that Hennessy and Coke, I knew she wasn't pregnant then. So it's just baby fat, residual baby fat. So then we got even Cynthia, they show up together. All right, then we got Can and Todd, they show up together. Can saying she wants to compete. I guess she got felt bad because she got her ass uh, kicked when they were playing the kickball type of uh event she lost miserably and oh it just is what it is i don't know where she gets the competitive spirit from because she's tending to seem like she's always losing every time she says she's a competitive person and then she even lost in the bowling thing that they were doing <coughs> so i don't know what's going on with Candy in that situation then we got mark says here uh, he invited everyone. They're trying to figure out why Tanya's not there at the bowling event. Really, it's just Portia, Cynthia, and Candy. And, uh, you know, Portia doing her due diligence. She's trying to find out. Uh, they, meaning Kenya and Mark, a team, and they really collectively don't like whoever Kenya's saying they don't like. But honey, Mark came out the bushes on her. Came out the forest to say, hell no, nah, I invited everybody. I told Kenya it wasn't my fault because I told her to invite everybody, even if they spouse or a uh, uh, couple couldn't make it, but one of them could. 
bring them. You know, they all can come. They're all invited. And Kenny was like trying to say, well, uh, this. And he was looking at her like, girl, 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 you being too, too petty. But um, they got it out of Mar Mar. So he wasn't on that mess. He wasn't on that pettiness mess train that Kenny was riding. And, you know, he apologized for them not being there. But, you know, he said he invited everybody. So he was clearing his name. And Kenny was up there looking like a fool. He left her again out there in the dark with no candle or no flashlight. Okay. Then we got even Cynthia and Portia. They talking about how Mark just be shutting down Ken. Not Kenya, but Ken. But I see both of them as the same. Okay. He shut them both down. He didn't want to hear that mess. He didn't want to hear that noise. All right. He was getting Kenya all together. And Ken Andy was up there whispering and talking with Cynthia and Portia about it. I'm like, no, wait a minute. Candy's supposed to be on your side. And you always say, Candy, way back when y'all had dinner together, that Ma need to be on a Kenya's side, not on Nene's side. So now what? You, you sw you're switching up, honey. You're switching up, Candy. I said, damn, loyalty is not in this group, okay? Loyalty, friendship, and sanity does not exist in this group of women, all right? So uh, Kenya comes over trying to see what they gossip about or what they're talking about, and they're all laughing at her, including her friend, Cynthia, as well as Candy. Oh, yes, honey. And they was, you know, uh, Portia was trying to get on Kenya about her friend. Tanya about Kenya calling her friend a cunt and woo, that brought back memories when Portia and Kenya was at odds with one another and she was trying to tell Portia to stop taking up for people you know stop riding that train because you know it ain't a good train to be on and Portia told Kenya to stop pointing her fingers at her I said "Ooh, do I see a drag coming do I see a drag coming up in here in this bowling alley okay because you know Portia about them hands clicking on clutching on holding on to Kenya's hair whether you want to call it fake hair or the real hair it doesn't matter uh Portia know how to hold on tight and don't let it go all right we move on into that sixth scene where Mark pitches his black man lab after everybody I do mean everybody has stopped bowling he tells about the black lab what it's gonna be he asks Dennis to take a part of it become a speaker that night Dennis accepts <coughs> Portia accepts for Dennis Candy, or not Candy, Portia saying, well, what about Nene? What about Tanya? Are they invited? He said, I invited everybody. We're going to do this. I'm going to take care of it this time. Since this bowling thing didn't act right, I'm going to make sure everybody gets accepted and they get uh, they get an invitation because no, this is too important to be, be being petty over. And he's like, "Ain't that right, Ken?" And Ken answered, "Yes." Like, oop, the sergeant had asked her a question for her being the little private, and she answered on the dime. Okay. Then we got Ken tries to get Kenya on board, saying, "You know, that's what that one right, Kenya." She trying to turn on her own friend in front of her husband. Okay, meaning Kenya's husband allegedly. And I'm like, "Oh, everybody jumping off the broom. Ain't nobody." Nobody there I ain't nobody there but the air to defend Kenya. Okay. Woo wee. We got uh, Kenya taking notes and taking names. She gonna come back and get all they behind. Especially Candy and um Cynthia. Then you know you got Candy and Porsche, they laughing and talking about how Ma shits Ken down and how can say, yeah, honey, Ma don't play, honey. Whatever he say, can you jump? She, she, she don't mess with Ma. Ma is the man. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. So you conspiring, talking about Ken behind her back. Is that what we do, Candy? Is that what we do wearing all those manu Illuminati type dresses? Okay. <coughs> but I'm like, oh, my goodness. The tables have turned. The tables have turned towards the end. Of everything, Nene show up with Greg. I'm like, oh Lord, they on time. <laughs> They're not on time. They are fashionably late. But hey, Kenya didn't stay with seven minutes. So I guess she said, "Well, I get there when they getting ready to go," because I didn't want to be there in the first place. She didn't invite me. So Greg goes on and say, you know, he wasn't coming nowhere. His wife wasn't invited. He would love to come to the Black Lab, um, honey. Ma just sat and put it all in perspective. Dennis really wasn't listening. Todd really wasn't listening. But he was making the women listen plus Greg. He said, wherever he is, Nene is always welcome. Greg, you're welcome. Isn't that right, Ken? Ken was like, yes, you're right. And he just pretty much laid it down. Laid the law down and laid Kenya down there too for Nene to walk on her if she wanted to. And Nene was trying to hug Kenya and everything. And 
uh, Kenny was kind of walking away or trying to not get that whole hug. It's like that pat pat hug. Like it's fake and fraudulent what you're doing to me. I catch your drip. No, I'm not going to hug you. I'm not going to give you an embrace because I know what you're doing. And I got to listen to my husband over here. And, and he ain't taking up for me. He taking up for you and how you treat me and just that third. And I'm like, oh, I'm loving every bit of it. I'm loving every bit of it. Do you hear me? And it was, it was just a nice scene towards the end. It's like, uh-uh, Kenya may have done you wrong, may have talked about you real bad and tried to treat you bad, but you, you won't be done because I need your money, honey. I don't care what Kenya talking about. Kenya ain't got no money to get, give me what I need for this charity, okay? And, um, yeah, she made, he made Kenya look like a, a pretty natural ass out there. And I'm like, uh, but you call him your husband. Uh, you call him that he ride or die for you. Uh, you want to stay married to him. Uh, you, you, you and him are good. Girl, please, this man, ooh, child. This man, this man, this man. But like I said, I'm riding for Mark. Yes, I am. Because everything done in the dark come to light. Yes. And if Kenya... You're getting your karma paid back on how you treated everybody. And you just had called Tanya Sam's a cunt. Girl, please. Mark is doing everything to repair what you did to her that night. Okay? So, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool. Everything he dished to you, just think about it. You dished to somebody else. So, it's just coming back full circle on you, can you? Why don't you and Nene just make up and call it a day? But if you did that, I guess we wouldn't have a show. Because we depend on somebody to give us some drama. And I wish, ooh, I wish Mark was stay in the scenes honey because he shows another quiet version of kenya moore kenya moore the submissive ken kenya however you want to see her she ain't going off on nobody she being very ladylike and she's taking her poison that she tries to dish out on others but that's all i have for this video guys if y'all like it love it continue to watch our channel like the videos and share with the masses please do that for us so we can grow continuously and um i'll see y'all next week for um you know the conclusion episodes of the real housewives of atlanta uh as they start to try to wrap up on us but yes get down in them comments y'all congregate with each other be nice of course as usual we're all family we all have difference of opinions but everybody's opinion matters okay and i will talk to y'all next video good night guys